Hi, I'm Bernard Richter. I'm with Leica Geo Systems more than 16 years now, and I'm responsible for the survey GNSS products since over 10 years now. We start from the user requirements, right? So we're trying to find out what is the problem of the customer. And we found out that two major problems of the customer are one, if they work with high precision GNSS, they want to use it in difficult environment as well. So, and this is where they start having problems. So we want to address this, this issue and want to work, work, have it work more robust in difficult environment. And the other thing and the problem the user very often has is that the RTK link is unstable. So we tried to address these issues. So the entire development of the G16 was centered around these two, <laughs> two problems. And the G16 has a very powerful 555 channel engine that tracks every existing signal and every planned upcoming GNSS signal. So now we have more signals, which gives us more choice to use those signals. We can make more linear combinations, and this helps us improve the performance under canopy, in urban canyons, etc. But, like I said, more choice can also give more noise, weaker signals, and we need to clearly distinguish between strong signals and weak signals or noisy signals. So the receiver has to be quite smart. It needs to be adaptive, it needs to be intelligent. And this is why we call this G16 a truly self-learning GNSS receiver because it learns from the environment what signals to use and the depth. So it's really an intelligent system and that's why it's called self-learning and the technology term we give it is called RTK Plus is in fact is, is a new antenna is a new powerful measurement engine because you have a lot more signals you can track L2C and L2P in parallel and decide in the last very moment which one you use so and you also need more processing power so we have a new uh, RTK engine inside and RTK Plus is all these new engines working in harmony with one goal in mind to provide the best possible position for the customer. Now you actually bring me to the second challenge, the user challenge I was talking before, is what happens if your radio link is down, if you have weak cellular coverage. Um, what do you do then? How can we solve this problem? Um, with Leica, we have a very special way of predicting um, the reference data. But this prediction would only last maybe 15 seconds, um, maybe a minute. You can predict the data and you wouldn't need a high update rate of the reference to do this well. So you're absolutely right. Whether you have one second data rate or three second data rate from the reference, your, your position on the rover wouldn't be different. But the problem the user has is when it's not coming in at all after 10 seconds or not coming back after, after a minute. So what we developed here is a technology we call SmartLink. And SmartLink uses PPP technology to bridge RTK outages or works fully remotely. In the middle of Nevada, for example, you can position with a precision of three centimeters into the not having a data link at all. And this is a technology we call SmartLink. It's, uh, you might remember when Hexagon purchased or acquired Veripos, we're using their correction signals and it's now all integrated in the GS16. Of course, PPP um, depends also on the density of your network on the ground. The PPP signal, yes, comes from uh, a geostationary satellite, but it still relies 
on a ground-based system. So we are utilizing the very POS um, reference stations, which is uh, between 80 or 100 on a global basis. And this allows you, with our algorithms, to converge to the centimeter solution, typically, I would say, between, depending on the accuracy, 20 to 30, 40 minutes. But saying, having this said, if you use RTK and PPP in parallel to just bridge the gap, you don't need to wait that long. You have immediate the highest, immediately the highest precision. In fact, there's two, I call it tasks, running in parallel. So there is the RTK task running and also the PPP task running in parallel. And we always look for what is the best possible position at the time. And we select on the fly, and again, back to the terminology self-learning, on the fly, we learn from the situation and provide the best possible solution. With this system, we can right now, if we have, let's say, four or five Beidou satellites, we could do our positioning only based on Beidou. We can only base it on GLONASS. So we, we have the full variety, we can have satellites coming in and out and we are as flexible as you want with that system. The other thing of course we thought about it because this is our brand new platform and you'll realize, yes we changed the color, mm -hmm. but the housing doesn't look so much different to our former platform, the GS14. So why is it that way? We thought about it and thought what could we make better on the housing and it was it was really really tricky because what we want to do with the housing is protecting the electronics that's the only meaning of the housing is protect the electronics from humidity from uh, from shock from drop etc and this the platform of the GS14 was already so smartly engineered we're using a very flexible um, housing so we can drop the, the antenna easily and nothing happens um, but we have an elastic uh, material so we need a lot of screws to have constant pressure in between the ceiling rings right so we, we seal the unit completely um, the other thing is you look here we have something called a compensation valve this is a Gore-Tex membrane and what it does, uh, let's say you have the, the antenna in the car, it's about 20 degrees, I don't know how that would convert in Fahrenheit, uh, in the car, you take it out into the cold, let's say 0, minus 5 degrees, and the air would compress. What would happen, and we all know it from the watch, it would also get in humidity. And that's the worst for the electronic board the boards could start corroding and this high-tech Gore-Tex membrane lets air to travel but keeps water outside that's one thing the other thing is we again keep the same we call it a um, safe lock mechanism we have eight pins that go in and out and you see this light uh, inclination here I don't know whether you can see it in the camera so it puts then pressure on the very thin ceiling ring to make this battery compartment 100% waterproof. And you see, none of the ceilings on Leica product is ever glued. You'll see competition products where they glue it. The thing is, pretty much the only aging material on the antenna is the rubber. So if, if that ever goes to service, automatically we exchange uh, the ceiling rings because they're so fast to exchange and um, you keep the IP rating or the entire life cycle of your of your product with the concept we we do it so we did all this for the GS14 and we couldn't find a single issue to make it better we seriously couldn't find it so we said we stay uh, with something 
great. I call mm -hmm. it great. And but of course the customer should know and see this is something new. There's a new primarily there's a new LNA, so we needed to change the filters because um, in, in order to track the signals in the best possible way, you need to widen your, your filters for the um, the E6 signal and then all all new signals. We we had to do this and that's why we also improved our antenna to optimally track every single signal.